Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the ECAD and MCAD Design Basics Workshop with Autodesk Eagle and Fusion 360. Before your host, Jorge Garcia begins with part one of the series, we wanted to let you know about the current bundle we're offering. Save 25% when you subscribe to Eagle and Fusion 360 together. You can enjoy the best of today's ECAD and MCAD technologies with seamless PCB and mechanical integration. For more information, please find links below and let us know of any questions you may have in the comments. Thanks so much, and now with you, your host, Jorge Garcia. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our ECAD MCAD basics video. This is going to be episode one of a three-part series. And our goal in this webinar is to go over the foundations of the ECAD MCAT system. Now, why is it important to have this integration? Well, for a long time, people relied on exchanged file formats. So I just step DXF. And what electrical engineers and mechanical engineers basically do in this scenario is they export from their software something that the other engineer can handle. So the electrical engineer would export a step, mechanical engineer brings in step, makes changes, exports a DXF, electrical engineer takes that DXF, makes changes, exports another step, kicks it back, so on and so forth. So basically it was two worlds living in isolation and using these intermediate formats to try to communicate. It works, but it doesn't allow for true collaboration. It's not an efficient workflow. So what we need as engineers to solve this is a singular model that is communicative and intelligent between both worlds and that's what we have achieved with the ECAD and MCAT integration so as you can see this is a data centric model both Fusion 360 and Autodesk Eagle can manipulate the same data they can act on it and as you're going to see later on in this video you're going to be able to notice that we can even actively collaborate on the same data so this brief video gives a really quick overview of how it works. You'll notice the design starts in Eagle. We then push to Fusion. You can see the mapping and how all of this uh, can interact together. So you also see some of the simulation cap capabilities of Fusion 360. And a lot of this we're going to be covering throughout the series. So it's just a, a little quick taste of what we're going to be doing. So in many cases you're going to start off creating a PCB outline in Fusion 360 in this type of workflow the mechanical engineer leads the dance and then the electrical one pulls this in taking into account that all of the constraints for the layout have been defined by the mechanical engineer on the ECAD side in this workflow the electrical engineer puts in the parts as the layout and then all of these changes can then be pushed back to Fusion 360 uh, it does not have to be led by the mechanical engineer. There can be scenarios where the PCB is, is already defined and now the mechanical engineer has to adapt an enclosure to it. In those situations, Eagle can lead the dance and we can push from Eagle to create a new design in Fusion. So in this video, you're going to notice the collaboration workflow. When you push from Eagle, you're not going directly to Fusion. You're actually going through several services. Among them is Fusion Team. And what Fusion Team allows you to do is to, for your team to get together. And you can all, at the same time, look at the model. You can comment it, suggest uh, changes for revisions, so on and so forth. So at, in real time, there can be collaboration. And you can avoid a long stream of emails going back and forth trying to figure out uh, what changes need to be made, what are the needs of each engineer in the team, that way everybody can, can be satisfied. As, as we have been saying, this is an integrated workflow. And you guys saw in the previous slide that we had a data-centric model. Well, that data-centric model revolves around managed libraries. These are the glue that unite Eagle and Fusion 360. So the goal of this webinar is to really set the foundation by understanding what managed libraries are and how they work. So you can see here we have the Eagle side using Fusion Sync. We have the managed libraries where we do all the mapping for 3D models. And through that mapping, now Fusion 360 can create a, an accurate model of the design. So we see how managed libraries work. It's all done currently 
through an online interface we do we are working to provide the same functionality from within eagle that way you don't necessarily have to leave eagle to do the mapping and this slide really shows the various steps step one is to export any libraries that don't, are not 3d mapped into a single one in your local library editor you then convert that to a managed library you go to the online editor currently map it with 3d models then we go to our design we update the libraries on that design and then we can do the push pull workflow our goal in this webinar is really to cover uh, steps two and three for the most part so that's going to set up the foundation of managed libraries that we can later leverage to use this ECAD MCAD integration so let's go ahead and go live with Eagle let me go ahead and minimize this so this is Eagle this is the Eagle control panel we're going to be working with a really simple design and what I want to show you is the library so this is a very basic library as you can see it contains one device and that device has not been mapped this is an unmanaged library the way you can tell is that there's no mention of managed library and there's no version number so to create a managed library very simply you go library create managed library and you'll notice that you get this little dialog and there will be the option to uh, archive a local copy on create okay what does this option mean? If you leave it checked, as soon as the managed library is created, the original library will be moved to an archive location. The reason for doing this is that if you don't relocate it, then both libraries are seen in the library tree. So when you go to the add command, you'll see both the unmanaged and the managed library. And that can be dangerous because you don't want to mix them on the same design. You don't want to have managed and unmanaged parts from the same library in the same design because that's going to create issues when you have to do an update. We'll be talking about that more later. If you don't want, for whatever reason, your library moved, you just uncheck this option and hit Create. Okay. You'll notice a, a progress bar, and then you'll have a managed library. I've already done that previously, so I'm not going to do it here. Let me show you this managed library. So we're going to go up to the managed library section. We go to My Managed Libraries. Here's the uh, managed library I created. And I can open it. You can edit your own managed libraries. The ones that ship with Eagle, those can cannot be edited. However, you can copy whatever you need from them and bring that into your own design. So as you can see, this is a managed library. It is referenced as such. Managed library. Version 2. Okay, so it leaves it clear that this is a managed library. You'll notice that we have 3D packages. Those that have been mapped, we can preview. Okay, Anything that hasn't been mapped is basically going to be represented by a rectangle, so it will not be previewed here in, in Eagle. Okay, Now, as I mentioned, the workflow now requires us to go to the web to do the mapping of the packages. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we can either go library, view on web, or we can go to edit 3D packages on web. Before we go there, I do want to review a couple of things. You'll notice that previously, when it was an unmanaged library, we just had the option to create a managed library. Now that it is a managed library, there's a few options here that we need to, keep to talk about. First, if you have the, if you make local changes to the managed library, you have to click Create New Version so that way those changes are reflected on the cloud. It's very important that the managed library that's on the cloud and the local library, your local copy of the managed library, are always in sync, are always up to the same version. So if you make local changes, you now need to update those changes to the cloud and we do that using create new version. Okay. If, for example, you make changes and you save the library but you don't create a new version, what you're going to see is that up here it's going to say Manage Library Version 2 plus Edits. So if you see plus edits, it is vital that you go ahead and either create a new version or if you decide that you don't want to keep those changes, you have the option to discard the local edits. Okay, So those are going to be your two main commands to push changes to the cloud 
or to discard your local changes. Now, what happens if it's the other way around? If now on the cloud library you've mapped a component, you've created a new version of the library on the cloud, now you need the local one to update to that. Well, very easy. We go library, update to latest version. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. So now, let's go ahead, now that we have that clear, let's go ahead and, and edit the 3D packages on the web. Okay, it's going to go to the online library editor. And after a few moments, the library opens, as you can see here. If for whatever reason you notice that it does not open, okay, you just see that the library editor stays cycling. In that situation, the best thing to do is to go ahead and clear your cookies completely all of your cache and browser history, go ahead and clear all of that and usually after you do that you'll find that the the feature works so that's something we've noticed if you run into that problem where it just seems to be spinning its wheels just go ahead and clear your, your cache and your, and your cookies and after that it should work so this is the library you notice that under packages we have all these exclamation marks which let us know that we're missing 3D packages. So in this library, there's actually only one item that is has been assigned a package. Okay. You'll notice that the library is at version two. As long as there are no changes, you will see green and you will see the version number. If you make a change, you'll notice that that becomes draft. Okay. We're going to illustrate that in a second. Whenever you see a draft, that means you have unsafe changes. You need to make a new version. Otherwise, you can't reflect that in your local copy of the managed library. So it is vital that you always make sure that your version, that you have a version number, that you don't have anything in a draft state. Now, when you make changes to the package, those also are versioned. So it's important to keep track that you're going to have versions for your 3D packages and versions for the library itself. So it's always important to stay on top of that. So let's go ahead and, and map something. Okay, let's pick uh let's pick this one here. Okay, you notice we have the edit button. It'll show us that we currently have a rectangle. Let's go ahead and pick edit. This will now open a new tab in your browser. You may notice that we're using uh Chrome. It's not critical to use Chrome, um, but usually it, for us it seems to work best. Okay, so as you can see, we have the rectangle. If you do not assign a step model, you're gonna have the rectangle, the, the, the cube or rectangle. Now we can upload our own step models using this item here. We can always go back to the default box by clicking here and we can go to select package. Now select package ties into ecat.io and it basically just does a quick search. Okay, uh, Right now it's really more than anything a placeholder. Um, however in this case it seems to actually have brought up some some useful uh, packages because it just uses the part name to do a quick search uh, in the future we'll be improving this integration right now like I said it's just a placeholder it's mostly experimental but in this case it's given us a good result so I'll pick select it's gonna go ahead and do its update and you'll see that we have it there. Now it's come in with not the correct orientation but that's very easy to fix so we can use by hand we can just kinda rotate things perfect We can take a quick look it looks good okay if you click on it you have all these parameters that you can adjust and everything will, will work just fine notice that as soon as I brought that in we went to a draft state so it's important now if I'm happy with this which I am to click on draft and we're going to create a version. Okay, this is going to be now version 2. And we will say mapped chip LED. Say create. You'll notice that now we're green. We're happy. We, we've, we have a new version of our changes. So now if we go back to the library, so I'm going to exit this tab, go back to the library editor, we notice that immediately is to tell you that there are changes here and we want to go ahead and now update and include those changes in the library so there's three different places we can update if you make several changes you can always just hit update all and you'll take care of all of them if not you can do it one at a time um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick update all you'll see that it says it's ab updating these new changes to the, ver to the library now so you'll notice that 
because of these changes, now the library is in a draft state because there's new changes. So we click draft, create new version, and I say mapped chip LED. I'll say create. Perfect. Okay, so now we have green here. Everything is okay. If we go back to Eagle, to our Eagle library though, we'll see that our Eagle library is still at version 2. So there's several ways we can update it. We can do it from within the library itself. We can just go update the latest version. But we can also do it from the design itself. So let me go ahead and show you how we can do that. So here we have a board. Okay. Now go library, open library manager. And if we look, we're going to see that we have that Berkeley library. Eagle detects that there's a new version available. So I'll click it. I will say update. And as soon as this updates, we see that it's available to use. Okay? So I'll go ahead and close this now. Now in our design, we want to go ahead and do a library update. We could do an update all. It makes a lot of assumptions. It looks through everything. So I'm just going to stick and specify the library I want to update. I want to update this one. I say update. And everything is updated and everything is cool. Okay. So now we're up to version 3 in the design. Now, a key point to discuss. This design already is linked to the managed library. So I don't have to worry about it. But when you make a lot, when you turn a library managed, you make a new li managed library. It is vital that you go to the design and you click library update and you choose your managed library. You basically update your design to now instead of referring to the unmanaged version of the library to point to the managed library. It is vital that you do that because it is Eagle cannot handle having managed and unmanaged parts from the same library in the design. It will break the update mechanism. Okay, So it is very important that as soon as you create a managed library, you update the design to use that managed library. Okay, So in my case, I've already taken care of that. And that's all we have to do. At this point, we can go to Fusion Sync, and we can push the design. So we say push to Fusion. We'll notice that everything is here. Updated library. Say push. Usually it will take a few moments to do. You see, board has been successfully pushed to Fusion 360. PCB 1 and Berkeley Fusion demo. And then we go to Fusion 360. Now we can go over here and figure out where I put that. When in doubt, Eagle can actually check for you at its source. Uh, we can see where it is. Very quickly you can check where you have the file saved. So it's very, very easy. It's under Edwin's first project. So now, if we go over here, whoops, to Fusion, that one's first project, and there it is. There's our updated. So in the next series, in the next video of this series, we're going to go into more detail into how the forward and backward happens, how we can push from Eagle, how we can pull into Eagle. And then in the last video of this series, we're going to go ahead and cover a more practical design example. So thank you everyone for watching. My name is George Garcia. I'm a product support specialist for Eagle and have a great day.